Now, with the Department of Justice now suggesting that the case against General Michael Flynn should be dropped altogether. We are advised on behalf of our legal eagles in Washington, D.C., that a federal judge has to accept that. But as Weisenberg just points out there, that uh, he would expect that to happen. Uh, we'll keep our ears out for more news on this because the president is now meeting in the Oval Office with the Texas governor. We do expect to have tape play out from that this hour. So stand by. We'll bring that to you. In the meantime, on the phone with me now is Katie McFarland who served as Deputy National Security Advisor under General Flynn in the first few months of the West Wing of the Trump administration going back to January of 2017. KT, good afternoon to you. It's a great day for the Republic. It really is. Well, you were there when this all went down. You wrote a book about it. Your reaction to the news from the Department of Justice, KT? Um, it's about time. Uh, my assumption is that the Justice Department has determined that there are an awful lot of more incriminating documents that are going to come out about the people who are at the very top of the Justice Department and the FBI and potentially even in other intelligence agencies or even in the Obama White House who were involved in this. As I've said right from the beginning, I write about it at great length in my book of exactly what happened to General Flynn and exactly what happened to me. The FBI treated me the same way they did Flynn, showing up unannounced, suggesting I didn't need a lawyer, and yet the whole time we're setting him up and setting me up for perjury traps where they trick you into making a tiny little mistake in your statement where you say, well, it was Tuesday morning and it turned out it was Wednesday afternoon, and then they can pounce and say that that's perjury. But, Bill, there's something more sinister about what they did to Flynn, which is they blackmailed him, and they threatened to charge his son unless Flynn pled guilty to a crime he didn't commit. Um, KT, two questions. Did you expect this move today, or were you, hearing, were, were you catching wind of this at all? Um, I thought it was getting near to the point where something was going to break, whether um, the judge was going to throw out the case. I honestly didn't think it was going to be the Justice Department, at, in essence, admitting that they did something wrong. Okay. Um, then another question for you. All the matters surrounding Russia... Where are they now, or have they, as I mentioned to Brett a moment ago, do they appear to mm -hmm. have gone up in smoke in Washington, D.C.? It was all a scam from the very beginning. Um, when I was with General Flynn and, and President-elect Trump and met with the intelligence directors on January 6th at Trump Tower, which was when Comey first told the president-elect um, about the Steele dossier, they knew at the time that it was Russian disinformation. They knew it was a fake thing. But they seized on it as an excuse to investigate Flynn and, and Trump and a number of other people. And their plan all along, as I certainly experienced it personally, was to try to trick people into committing some crime or something that they could claim was perjury and then try to force you to turn on others. I mean, they made it very clear to me um, that they expected me to plead guilty to a crime I didn't commit or to implicate Flynn and President-elect Trump and President Trump in crimes I didn't think they committed. Mm. And if only if they did that, only if I were willing to do that would they go away. In the end, I didn't break. I'm very proud of the fact that I didn't. But I wasn't threatened with blackmail like Flynn was. Hmm. You talk as if you are a person who feels vindication now. Do you? Not yet. No. Hmm. Bill, until the people who did this are held responsible, um, and, and the sunlight shines on the things that the Justice Department and the FBI were doing. If they could do that to General Flynn and me, I was the most powerful woman in the West Wing of the White House. General Flynn was one of the most powerful people in the national security community, and yet the FBI thought that with impunity they could go after him. But, Bill, it wasn't about us. It was about getting President Trump in his first couple of days of office and to prevent him from effectively ruling. And I firmly believe that it was a group of people at the highest levels of the intelligence community who didn't like the election outcome. And so they were going to do what they could, use, abusing their power to try to hobble a duly elected president of the United States. Katie McFarland, thank you for that immediate reaction. Jumping on the phone there with us as well on this breaking news today. Katie, thank you.